Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, we're soon going to have a big fight for the European Super Middleweight, excuse me, Super Bantamweight title between unbeaten Carl Frampton, who YouTube Nation has been telling me about, and challenger Hugo Casares. Right now, understand according to the bookies, Frampton is an 11 to 1 favorite to win the fight. If you go to oddschecker.com right now, you're going to see that the casinos are offering you a minus 1,100 to bet on Mr. Frampton. He's that highly regarded. Let's look under the hood at Mr. Frampton, then I'm going to suggest a betting strategy that you might agree with, you might not agree with, but let's try to call it as we see it. Now understand, Super Bantamweight is the low 120s, right? 121, thereabouts. The guys ruling the roost right now in that division are Guillermo de Gundio and Leo Santa Cruz, right? Now let me say that Frampton looks great on film. The highlights are high lights, right? Big time puncher. He's 5'5", he uses his short stature well. He ducks under punches. He has a nice long right hand from distance. He can quickly jump inside and then start riddling your body with lefts. He's a combination fighter, right? Combination puncher. Throws punches with both hands. He's an offensive juggernaut. He hits hard with both hands, but his right hand is extra special. Right? I understand why people are salivating at him. Right? He's a guy who, quite frankly, looks great. But people need to realize that in boxing, a lot of young guys look unbeatable as they rise through the ranks. Then once they get to the world-class stage, whatever problems they have start to show themselves. Let's talk about Frampton. Frampton doesn't have a lot of lateral movement. Let me tell you too, I encourage you to look at the Kiko Martinez fight here online. I believe there are questions about Frampton on his back foot. Kiko Martinez came at him and had some success in several rounds. Notably, the second round. When both guys were fully rested, the fight had just started. Martinez pushes the issue, comes inside. And I thought Martinez looked like he had the shorter punches. I thought when he came inside, a lot of what Frampton was doing went over his head. In other words, Frampton's punches up top are a little wide. I believe a sharp counterpuncher with shorter punches could give him problems. Also, to me, Frampton has the same problem that Adrian Broner has. He moves a little better than Broner, but he needs a wide base for power. Now that's important because since he doesn't fight that well inside, he needs to back up when you get close to him. Now an opponent who knows that Frampton needs a wide base could literally look down at his feet, continue charging. You don't have to throw punches on the way in continue charging at Frampton knowing that nothing hard is going to come back until Frampton's able to split his legs 
and get leverage, right? I don't view his footwork as elite footwork. He's not a dancer. He's not a guy who can get up on his toes, dance around the ring, and keep you guessing at what's coming back. He's not that guy. Rather, he's a guy who needs to be flat-footed and needs to have his feet apart to throw big punches if you can get him on his back foot. Now, Cazares has been around the game so long that it might shock some people to learn that this guy hasn't been knocked out since 1999. Right, he's 36 years old. He's held belts multiple in the past. He's fought in very difficult locations like Puerto Rico against Puerto Rican legend Ivan Calderon way back when. Right, understand too, he's gained weight. As you look at the Cazares highlights, understand he's no longer that guy. A lot of Cazares' career was at 108 and 112. Now he's gained weight. He's a little bit fuller, but he still has the upper body movement. He's rolling with punches before the punches are in the area code. And I believe this guy can fight inside. If you look at the Calderon fights, you're going to see he's the guy on his front foot. Now, I believe boxing's more competitive than the casinos do. Especially when you're dealing with a former multiple champion who hasn't been knocked out for more than a decade. That second Calderon fight gets stopped in the seventh round because Calderon is injured. Right? While the fight got stopped before the end of the fight, it wasn't because Cazares was knocked out. Right? So when I see a survivor like this, who has fought a lot of top-notch opponents, and the casino's giving you, let's figure out the hedge here. It's 11 to 1 if you take Carl Frampton. If you take Cazares, it's seven to one. I bet a dollar on Cazares to win seven. You know, one of my first rules in gambling is to get leverage from the casino. I don't want to be giving the casino leverage. I want to get the leverage. Given the holes I see in Frampton's game, they're the typical holes that you see in the game of a young guy who hasn't been at championship level that long. The bet I'm recommending, which might surprise some people, is that you consider taking Cazares to win the fight at 7-1. to one. I know the fight's in Ireland. But take Cazares to win at 7-1, to one, hedged with a bet being offered at Skybet right now the over six and a half rounds at a minus 275. Understand the Kiko Martinez fight made it into the ninth round. Right, the ninth round. Understand here, you're getting such leverage on the seven to one prop that you can actually pay the minus 275 prop. You can bet both and make a profit. Obviously, if Cazares pulls the upset, then you're laughing all the way to the bank. Doesn't matter when the fight ended. Right? If Frampton wins the fight, but as I suspect, gets tested for several rounds, is forced on his back foot, and has to earn the victory the way he did against Kiko Martinez by slowly turning the tide and then proving his punching power in youth can rule the day right in the second half of the fight 
then there's the possibility that you profit off the minus 275 if the fight makes it past the midway point of the seventh round. Don't get me wrong. I'm impressed by Frampton. I think he's a very good fighter. I just believe this fight's mispriced. I don't believe if these guys fought 12 times, Frampton would win 11 of the 12. Right? And as good as Frampton has looked on highlights, right? Their YouTube video is called Frampton Highlights. He looks great on those highlights. But what I want you to do is to look at him against experienced competition. Kiko Martinez, right? If you're troubled by the second round, you're going to be troubled by the third round. I got news for you. Take a look at the ninth round, the round where Frampton closes the show on Martinez. That's a competitive round at times. It wasn't like Frampton was so dominant that by the time they got to the ninth round, Martinez is holding on. No, quite the opposite. Martinez still had a chance to win the fight before getting caught. Also, look at how much Frampton has to move. Right? He's not a guy who just stays in the pocket and is able to deal. Right? No, he's moving a lot. He's on his back foot a lot. And while the announcers at one point say, oh, Frampton's not that bad on his back foot, I beg to differ. Right? Because at the elite level, an opponent's not going to allow you to set your feet. Look at Frampton's feet. Look how far he has to split his feet to get power shots. To sum up, I see this fight going a few rounds. I like the over 6.5 at minus 275. Also, I believe the underdog's a live underdog. I wouldn't take Cazares if all the casino was doing was offering me even money or even two to one. But if the casino is going to offer me seven to one on a vet that's hard to knock out, who's a better fighter inside than Frampton, and I'm going to take that. So I like the over six and a half at minus 275 hedged with Cazares, the underdog. To win it seven to one right understand if the fight goes longer than six and a half rounds I'm good understand if Frampton wins the fight if anyone wins the fight after six and a half rounds I'm good if Cazares wins the fight I'm good at any time right because that's the big leverage play the seven to one leverage but understand I lose it all if Frampton closes the show before his hometown crowd, before the midway point of the seventh round. I like those odds. I like that risk. I think Frampton right here at these odds is a little bit overvalued. To the people who believe Frampton is the future of boxing, let me hear from you. Understand, too, Kiko Martinez, excellent fighter, was well into his 30s. Understand, Cazares, excellent fighter, is well into his 30s, right? He's 36. Before we start the Frampton talk about Frampton ruling the roost in a division with guys like Rigondio, in my opinion, a guy on the short pound-for-pound -pound list for the best in the sport, and Leo Santa Cruz, and I'm just here to tell you, I mean, Santa Cruz is smart, heavy volume, right? A guy with a multiplicity of skills. Before we put Frampton in that conversation, before we make Frampton 11 to 1 favorites against guys who have held titles at two different times in their careers, let's see how he does here. I'll be blunt. I'll be very surprised if Frampton gets the early knockout. He's going to have to show me. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.